Hello everyone. In today's episode, we're going to be going on uh, we're going to be going we're going to be going over mail hug. And what is mail hug? Basically, if you have your local environment and you want to be able to catch emails that you send out without having to use a third-party service like MailTrap, which is wonderful, by the way, if you are using, say, like a team and you are sending multiple emails and you want to see how it looks like and you don't want to have a sandbox or anything like that, MailTrap works wonders for that. So I think it's, it's a paid service. No, it definitely is a paid service, especially if you want to use it as a group, but definitely... If you have the budget, I will strongly recommend this uh, for your development, for your staging environment or your development if it's on a server and you're developing with other developers. Basically, uh, QA can go in and look at all the different emails, how they look, and they can tell you exactly what happens. And you can set it up by um, application. So if you have, you're working uh, multiple applications, you can set it up like that and you will get those emails to that specific application. But in this case, I think it's an overkill for um, local development. And what I use to catch all my emails is MailHub. So basically, uh, when I started working with Docker and I started setting up Docker for Laravel, uh, I came upon Laradoc and I already did a video about that and how to set it up. And Laradoc, it's, it's really cool because it basically gives you all the services you don't have to do the setup yourself for each individual thing if you were to do all the setup you will probably end up with something like this it has a bunch of more services i don't use but since i don't start them they're not running they're not doing anything they're just taking like hard drive space with i i don't care honestly and i have only 250 uh gigabytes of ssd but I, it's still plenty of space for me to uh, play with and, and do other stuff and be able to develop uh, so this is how it looks like when 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 you send an email to your to your mailbox it looks something like this so in this application it sends a, a video uh, this is a gif so basically this this is how I develop this entire template to look like and I just make sure hey does it look like that you can also with Laravel you can set it up to be to go to your log file but a lot of times you can't really see any of this on your log file you can't see how it's going to be presented and maybe you want to see it like that that's why I love this so it catches pretty much all of your emails um, that you send out uh, through your applications on local development and to go over a little bit of exactly how that is done, um, here in, this is the Laradoc application. And if you go inside the Docker Compose YAML file, the YAML file for Docker Compose is basically the map of how every single service is gonna be laid out and, and mapped and what uh, port is gonna be mapped to and what networks is gonna use and whatnot. So that gets deeper into Docker itself, but just to give you a brief overview, if you look at, if you look for MailHug, we can see that MailHug right now, it's mapped to internal ports 1025, 1025. So inside Docker is 1025, in your host is 1025. And then the mail, ser the, the web service, so what we actually just looked at is 8025, 8025. So that's basically uh, what it's showing. If, if I go, if I go back, show you here port 8025 on localhost that's where it's being mapped to so that's how it's mapped and it's also mapped on the networks front end and back end so the ones in the front end and then the back end obviously is like mysql like some of the back end services that you you need you know so in that case it's using both because you need a, a setup for the internal sending of the emails and then a setup for you to look at the emails so that's why it's using front end and back end so now I'm gonna be setting up a um, notification with Laravel to show you like a, a brief example. I thought making this first and then actually just have you uh, look at it, but I kind of got a head start and I said, you know what, let me just live code it so they can see exactly how I can do it, so how I do it. Uh, so now I'm inside my Docker container right here. So if I go out, I can go back uh, with uh, docker compose exec workspace bash and that's going to take me right into my container 
I'm gonna go and find because I have multiple uh, websites and again I showed you this in a previous video I go inside playground and then from playground I can get to I can get into Laravel so I use art uh, that's just an alias I have in, in my system but PHP artisan and then we're gonna be making a controller and the controller's name it's going to be the same one that we have over there actually no I didn't copy that form submission controller so I can just type it out form submission controller so now it's gonna make this controller now I should be able to go inside and look for that controller in the system it's right here and I mapped it to the store uh, method so if I do store store is going to take a request and I'm not be I'm not going to be doing any validation or anything like that I can show you another video will where I can show you how to use uh, some of the request classes in, in WordPress in WordPress in Laravel uh, I work a lot with WordPress as well so that's why I mentioned that like a lot of my work at work I use WordPress and Laravel so uh, I love Laravel way more than WordPress by the way but here it is what it is so we are at the store you see I just wanted to show you that that's where I'm mapping that and submit form that's gonna be an action that's gonna be on my component so I've already went ahead and created a component let me just hide this and then you can see that this is the playground that I've been using for all the other videos so inside my components directory I created an email sender and then inside the email sender I am setting up this form class and I, I can go a little bit about it uh, a little bit on about it on it so you can see exactly how what it is and how it works um, so it's submitting there's a form post and then I'm doing submit form and that's how it's connecting it over to the submission right here so what I'm gonna do uh, is just return usually you will do something with it like you will do like hey um, do store it or, or whatever it is that's more out of the scope of this video but definitely I'm just kind of like going briefly over it but definitely actually just we'll just data it's already mapped so I'll just do that's gonna return an array right there so I'm just gonna return it right out basically and then I'm getting it here I'm gonna do a console log and I'm not sure why it's giving me an issue but let's just start doing the form so I know that in bootstrap you'll do form group to set up like a field and then you do label the label uh, it's not really that I'm gonna have a name and I'm gonna have a message the name is gonna be an input the input is gonna be of type text and I'm gonna V model that so I'm gonna bind the model to the form that name and just kind of copy that the text yep yeah. and then the message is gonna be a text area the V model for that I don't really need a lot of this stuff and this is uh, just doing like a, a quick you know form usually I will go in and add the IDs and add all that and that's what this is telling me right now it's like hey you need to add I have it set up so that it does that it's like hey you need you need a missing associated label so I will go in and do some of that when I do my code cleanup but this is just a like I said before just to show you a little bit of how how it works and then let's go and create another form group uh, one other thing that we need over here is uh, make it a form control so that it has that nice uh, full width you know that bootstrap comes with out of the box and if we go back in here we'll see that uh, we can do the same into the text area it was methods and if I go like now it's yellow so now that tells me hey on submit is already go ready to go form has name message and that's already being binded when I send this post it's already gonna add the data in there and I can show you a little bit of the inner works of this and I got this from uh, Jeffrey Wake tutorial 
a while back and I modified it a little bit to fit my needs. Um, but basically, it's a class form for JavaScript and then you need a da data for the constructor. So basically, you can pass the data for the constructor. Uh, that's this data right here. And then if you go back on it, it, it basically maps everything for me. It creates these errors where basically that's going to uh, return and save inside of a class where I'm able to use it and record them uh, like this. And then I can use them like if I'm doing some kind of validation, I can go ahead and add them inside my fields. I, I'm not going to do that right now, but because it's not the scope of the of, of the video, but uh, basically that will give me display me like if it has errors so i can go and do mm, has you know so i can be like hey do you have an error and if it does i can display like a little message here hey you know you need this or add like a class that has those red uh borders and that way people visually can see like okay you need this this is required you know if i do that it will take a lot longer so maybe i can do the next video on that uh, but basically going back to it it allows me to do that and inside of that if you if you look at the post method it already it's already doing for you like it's already passing the type which in this case is going to be post you know and then the url it's already passing that and then it's already mapping the data for us so it's already doing that when it maps the data it goes ahead and, and clear like the original data it's a clone of like what you originally had and the errors and all that so it, it kind of like handles it for you and i wrote this uh, i believe I, I saw a date somewhere in here like in 2017 yeah and i've used it for all my projects and i can leave uh i can share it so you can see exactly what the code looks like modify it to your liking but it works wonders because now i can just do this and i don't have to do it on every single component i have on all my forms uh so just do post post already has the data right here as we can as we saw and then it's doing it into the submit form and all right we also need a way for us to show this so i'm gonna go ahead and like use the same welcome so if we go inside welcome i believe over there i have my skeleton loader so bye bye skeleton loader and let's do email sender I have not mapped this in view yet, so I need to go inside my resources app.js. Right beneath this, I'm going to do email sender. And it's going to be email sender. That's already uh, adding it right in here. So it did it all the way up here. And if if you see like it's already mapped it's already mapped so i go in the welcome now if i go to the web page itself I'm crossing fingers let's see what's going on we get an error so basically it's saying hey did you register the component correctly so we did maybe uh assets aren't running or something's going on something like that assets are running so let me just run that again I have the the form over here let me give it some <laughs> Let me make it look better because right now it's just thrown inside of a of a, just a div, you know. So let me give it a little bit of of uh, magic over here. Let me give it some. Put it inside of a call exit twelve. So I'm putting it inside of the Bootstrap grid. And let me move this both over here. So right now I should go back and boom. Okay, now 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 it looks better. Um, so now I can do actually more realistic. This is like do like a four and then offset Excel eight. Basically, actually four. I don't want to move it all the way. I just want to center it. So basically, it's a twelve grid four, and then it moves it offset four. So it leaves it right square in the middle. Um, if I do Andres, and then I do hello Andres. Okay, and I I need a submit button. 